I'm here to talk about media morphosis. So if we could uh, have a look at the presentation. I'm going to focus on the future of newspapers, but also the future of magazines, the future of the printed uh, press uh, media as we know it. I will answer the following three questions. What is the new business model that is going to pay our bills going forward? Second, how do we reinvent print for the digital age? What is the role the print is going to play in our new business model? And third question, how do we create a culture of innovation to indeed begin an earnest process of transformation that is well due, well overdue for, for many of us. And um, beginning with the first big question, where is the money, the new newspaper business model? Um, we published this book on behalf of One Ifra, and we also published this book on behalf of FIP. Uh, this one for the last six years, Innovations in Magazines. This one for the last 16 years, on behalf of One Ifra, Innovations in, in Newspapers. And for many years, we wrote about prognostication. What is coming up? What is working? What is not working? And the turning point this year for all of us, which is a very welcome experience, is to indeed come to you with a book that really talks about a prescriptive way forward. Now we do know that there is a business model that will sustain us, and there's a lot of money to be made here, and you'll see how in a moment. But we've gone from prognostications, where we're often shots in the dark, to a very prescriptive way forward for your business. There are six keys to the success of this model, and all routes will take you through one of these roads. Some of them are obvious, some of them are not, and some of them have tremendous implications as to how you reorganize your business. Number one, mobile will become the dominant platform. So if you don't have a newsroom, if you don't have an editorial team obsessing, organized, and indeed producing content for the dominant platform for your audience, uh, you are making a big mistake. Uh, video will become the dominant mode. If you want to grow the top line and the bottom line, invest in video. The web is becoming a visual medium. Digital is becoming a visual medium. What most people are doing on digital platforms is watching moving pictures. This is a medium that started as written word, as textual word. Now it's moved on to video. This is pre-rollouts, mid-rollouts, post-rollouts. And don't worry about the ad blockers. Don't worry about that yet. That ap apocalyptic scene that everybody's portraying, all that revenue we work so hard to make, is going to disappear overnight. It will not and especially the pre-roll video formats are very resistant to ad blockers. Native advertising will become the dominant vehicle. In fact, the apocalyptic, again, uh, crisis that we all think is coming because of ad blockers, it's a good news for us because it means we need to go back to leaving, abandoning the dependent business on display advertising. That business model is broken display ads, pop-up ads. When was the last time any of you clicked on a, on a display ad, on a pop-up ad? They're dead. And what's replacing it is native advertising, and uh, there are many other words for this, branded content, uh, paid programming, paid messages, campaigns, and so on. There are many different words for that theme as to how we connect advertisers who want our audience and our audiences with advertisers in a way that's frictionless, that is clever, and it respects the, de the delineation between a free press and indeed a compromise uh, press. Programmatic will be the dominant method. All that time and effort we spent in selling our stock, our display ads, our eyeballs, our CPMs through people is now going to robots. And that's very good news for us because that we can focus on making the transformation to this new uh, editorial and advertising model of native advertising. Number five, uh, data will become a dominant uh, editorial and business decision dynamic. It will not dictate, but it will dominate. So if you don't have an analytics department, if you're not invest in, investing in audience research, as the New York Times has done, announcing to editors for audiences, editors for audiences, what does that mean? If you're not obsessing in making sense of the analytics, it's very difficult to indeed move into that. And finally, events and e-commerce are a fantastic new source of revenue. I don't have to go into it, uh, time to go into it in detail, but we're already seeing clients whose uh, revenues from events are up to 20%, and those are replacing lost print revenues. 
And that loss is not coming from a digital product, it's coming from a physical product. Because magazines, newspapers do have the power to convene. They do have the power to bring people together and to get them uh, to pay for a gathering of physical human beings. So all these, all these must be part of the new business model mix. And then from prescription to indeed plan of action. We talk about how many publishers, how they're indeed restructuring um, all these different sources of revenue. But phenomenal money to be made from many of them when the business model just was not there before. But the key message, you have to move on from the display advertising model where we obsess with unique visitors and page views and getting a huge audience. And as you will hear me talk about in a moment, we got into voyeurism and not journalism. And we've ended up with just selling CPMs and, and chasing audiences and, and doing silly things that has undermined a lot of our brands. Now, how do we then reinvent print for the digital age? Which I'm sure is a preoccupation for many of you. And my starting point is that this is going to be a big source of revenue for us for a long time to come. 93% of revenues still come from print globally. Of course, many different dynamics. And my message to you is that flat is the new up. So your strategy cannot be romantic, cannot be nostalgic, cannot be how do we get back to these massive circulation peaks and, 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 and numbers that we had in the past. But the strategy really has to be how do I reinvent it so my circulation stays flat, but my revenue increases. How do I protect that print and keep it flat as long as possible? And in many markets, again, the apocalyptic scene of free fall has not happened. And we're beginning to see a stabilization of that. We'll talk about that in a moment, yes. But the newspaper business model has changed forever. It's still alive. It's still a profitable option. It will be a profitable option for decades to come, but not as we know it. And it's very interesting that in this whole discussion for the last 20 years, very few people have asked the obvious question, which is that the problem is not the medium, but the model that sustained that medium, especially for newspapers. Magazines, not so much, but especially for newspapers. Very few people have gone into the actual content model that we offered on print and say, is that relevant? And is that really the reason why people are not consuming our printed product? And I will submit to you today that that is indeed where the answer lies to the key solution. That what we were telling them to consume in the past is not relevant now. So it's not that the newspaper has died, but that the editorial model that sustained it is now irrelevant. What do I mean by that? Well, we believe that paper should become premium. An online and mobile prêt-à-porter. Premium haute couture, digital prêt-à-porter. If you think of Armani, they have the big, big um, fashion uh, dresses that go for the Oscars. Those are haute couture. They often don't make money, but you need that if you're Armani to then sell everything that comes below it. Armani Collezione, Armani Jeans, Armani Casa and so on and so on. You need that flagship. So we do believe that you need to begin to focus on shifting uh, print to a premium, premium proposition. And this is valid even with commoditized news, even with gossip news, even with um, some consumer uh, magazine titles. But this is very much the way forward. And in this mix, circulation will go down or stay flat, but your revenue should increase. And we believe that a good benchmark, and we're already seeing this in many markets, it's a multiple of five. So your circulation goes down, but you charge more. We're seeing it in Paris with some titles, we're seeing it in London, we're seeing it in New York, in big cities, in Miami, the three titles already, where they're charging more at times five. And people are willing to pay for it. But if you give me something different, if you're giving me the same product as before, and you're scratching your head saying, how do I keep this alive? And you're not changing the editorial model, content design. It's very difficult to then go back to a reader and say, I'm going to charge you more.
Because after we've given it all out for free on digital platforms, what should be the day after newspaper? What should be the weekly after magazine? Keep in mind, in the digital age, there are no monthlies, there are no weeklies, there are no dailies. That's gone. So we keep thinking, this is the answer that needs to be, to, to, this is the question that really needs to be answered. What do I put in this product? If we assume that it still can be relevant, how do I make a premium? What do I put in it? What do I present every morning? They definitely do not want 10 hour old news in print, that's obvious, but we're still doing that every day. And looking at the press here this morning, and I will not name names, News that I knew way 17, 18 hours ago, being given middle sized stories, even full page treatments. So we need to kill this model the, all the news that's fit to print, the paper record of the day before, the American multi section American model. This was invented by Joseph Pulitzer and Willie Randolph Hearst 175 years ago, you know what I mean, is the masthead with, you know, gothic lettering, uh, whatever, the New York Times with all this gothic and please don't touch that. And then you had the jumps on the page and then you started with each section and you went on and section and section and section. This, this content proposition, this product is now irrelevant. It served us really well and it did really, really well for a long time. But things change and we need to understand that this architecture and this model is irrelevant and you as distributors should be the first one to pick that up with the returns every week when people just say I cannot possibly consume this and when I flip through the pages the news is 17 hours old and I'm consuming it on mobile please give me something on paper that is different frequency will undoubtedly change this is a reality it's coming it's happening but again you can keep it flat and your circulation increase if indeed you turn it into a premium proposition. So what are the new rules to, to reinvent paper, to begin an exercise? Um, less paper. Again, I don't mean less paper because you're selling less single copies of that paper. I mean a thinner product. More journalism. Less recycling, more reporting. You see newspapers full of charlatanism, you know, recycled news. Print it. Less web, more mobile, less commodity news, more scoops, less what? Stop telling me what happened yesterday. Tell me why, what's next? Less yesterday, much more about tomorrow, obviously. Less reviews, more previews, less opinion. Again, the web, mobile is full of fantastic uh, opinion. Everybody talks, wonderful. On paper, give me the facts. Just give me the facts. It can be informed comment or informed opinion based on facts. I will pay for something that quiets the noise and you go from noise to news, news based on facts. Less news, more analysis. Again, interpret it, take it forward. Less on news, more stories, less background, more briefings. Briefings, briefings, briefings. The success of e-newsletters in the morning, people getting a very clever briefing first thing in the morning uh, with good content is, is no accident. It's working very well for the economists, working very well for Quartz, it's working very well for Refinery29, uh, uh, the world's first uh, mobile magazine for women, and it's all based on morning briefings, afternoon briefings with clever content that is relevant to you at that time of the day. Less newspaper style, more newsletter style. Less description, more prescription. These are the new realities. Change is the new normal. This will become the new normal. This is a newspaper. These are the new art house newspaper emerging in Paris today. I chose this because they're relevant to you. You see them in Rome. They're doing extremely well. They're profitable today. Il Fatto. Is this a multi-section American paper? No. Does it cost almost five times more than it used to? Yes. Is it selling? Yes. L'opinion, a briefing newsletter to the point fast. 
And human, humans cannot ingest, let alone digest, any more data per day. So we see that as distributors and as publishers, you really have to focus on the insight that we now associate digital consumption with work, with duty. And people love to sit back on the weekends and even in the evening and just relax with a printed product. We're physical beings, human beings. We, we learn, we, we interact through physical contact. And there's a pushback, yes? Uh, at Oxford, where I teach part-time, we've studied human ingestion of digital content. And we peaked five years ago. None of us can consume any more. We, we're done. Let alone make sense of it or absorb it. So the physicality of our products is very, very important. So as distributors, making sure that your printed products are well presented, they're well printed, they don't leave ink in, in your fingers. I can't believe I'm still saying this, but I still see this in many, many countries. Yeah? The premium quality of it. And the key is to turn our perceived weakness. What people say is, that's your weakness. The fact that you're physical and, and, and tired and, and, and late into our greatest strength. So, so what are the perceived weaknesses of print that indeed we can flip around and turn it into our strength? Typography, photos, a new grid. As you saw with Leon, it's a completely different grid. Infographics, illustrations. This is a completely different architecture for an award-winning magazine in Portugal. Some of it is our work, I will disclose it up front but totally different architecture. This is for a newspaper in Brazil. Is this a multi-section? No, it's 24 hours. Briefing, summarize the world to me. All those 17 hour old news, put it briefly. Mesh, Vida and Sporte. Hey, where is economics? Where is politics? Oh, it could be Mesh, it could be Vida. That's it, that's your structure. Covers. Covers. Covers are the most important thing in newspapers today, especially this point of sale. We need to go back to a covers obsession with newspapers that also is emphasized with magazines. Not so many entry points, a much more minimalist approach if you can do so. And just tell me why I should read rather than assume that I will be interested because of the strength of the brand and just approach it. So this treatment of covers. This is not multi-section. These are not jumps in the page. These are very few entry points. And designing for content. In the digital age, design is content. The genius of Steve Jobs is understanding that, that he delivered your phone, but it was all about design. It was all about, you know, how, how do you know that somebody has an iPhone? Because they tell you so. Yeah? It's that obsession that needs to go back to our printed products. Design is content. So with this formula, for instance, where in 30 seconds you can read the headline, the subhead, the small analysis, the figures, the services, the boxes. This is not multi-section. I don't need to go to the opinion page to understand a deep and a very short story. So if you look at this treatment of a page, you have short reads, brief reads, quickly analyze it. This is the point. If you don't have time, read this, read that. And this is opinion. Don't jump to the opinion page. Opinion is here. Within the story, this is what this academic or this person thinks about this particular issue. These are some graphics built into the story. These are some facts and figures. This is something else. And there is your deep read if you want to read the whole story yourself. So offering a different rhythm rather than a lot of newspapers and magazines, they suffer the disease of the middle story. Everybody's just, okay, everybody's doing middle stories. But very few people are just doing, are doing briefings and really getting to the point uh, very quickly. Uh, and Churchill said that, I write more because it's easier than writing less. So our publications are full of, as Bob Dylan said about weekend papers, they're full of nothing, sometimes. So forcing journalists, producers, editors 
to really condense and briefly, quickly, quickly tell me what matters. It's a great service that you can offer that will make people addicted to your printed product. The Economist is the best example. You know if you commit that, you know, the fact that the design is very vertical, you don't realize you're reading a lot. But still, it gets to the point quickly. Stories. Stories treated in an entirely different way. This is a story from a leading newspaper in Portugal. This is a good way to begin a story. Typography. Typography, there are the clothes of our words. And good design is intelligence visualized. We care so much about how we appear in public, how we dress, and you have so many publications that pay so little attention to typography, which is the way people perceive what we tell them. Telling stories through letters. Wow. You tell me that somebody picks that up, pays for that, and will not want to repeat or taste it again, or go back to it, or remember it. Photography. What is photography? Photographos. Writing with light. This we can do extremely well with print. And the digital obsession, we, we've lost sight of the importance of this. And this can be done in a daily cycle with newspapers. Again, you present this on a daily basis, on a regular basis to your readers. You wouldn't have a problem with distribution. People do remember this. You know? This is the strength of print. Illustrations, and here I am in Belgium talking about illustrations, but they're coming back in a big way. And a very powerful technique to indeed engage with audiences. Infographics. To have a department that uses data journalism and, and indeed does infographics in a, on a regular basis. These are things that people uh, rip off your magazines and your newspapers and they put up on walls because they're so powerful, so, so compelling. This is where a magazine becomes a hobby and it becomes the National Geographic feeling that I just can't throw it away. You just can't throw that away if you're into bicycles. This you keep. This you keep. So let me get to the end of this with Again, the key message is design is content, and, and the weekend is a huge opportunity to introduce a strategy of luxury, medium, and a totally, totally different experience, where we completely reinvent the editorial formula. And in this weekend, Saturday is the new Sunday. And you see in plenty of markets, we talk about the Telegraph making more money some weekends at the Sunday Times on Saturday with a clever weekend strategy. Yeah? and uh, newspapers stepping into the magazine space. As you know, what, what, what's happening with our media world that we live in today, and it's always happened, is that there is a displacement, yeah? In addition to a disruption, very few people talk about the displacement. And the displacement is digital pushing into the space of newspapers, newspapers pushing into the space of magazines, magazines pushing into the space of books, and books pushing into the space of art collections. And it's okay, but you need to be ahead of the trend and understand that on the weekend, indeed, people would expect a much more magazine experience out of your newspapers that not just begins on Saturday, it begins on Thursday. So we've seen lots of markets in the book where indeed beginning a heavy, heavy weekend distribution on Thursday is a good strategy rather than waiting for Sunday to give me the three kilos of newspapers. 
And within this world, and within that, the six keys to success, so how you'll make money from digital, print will become your prestige, your visibility, and digital will become your mass audience. But you mustn't abandon it, and a lot of thought has to go into reinventing the print title. And I'm so worried about so many people, with so many of our clients we go, and they're so concerned with digital, digital, and it's like, what about print? Have you thought about, oh, no, no, print, uh, no, no, it stays, it's the cash cow. It's, you know, we'll just wait until, basically they're paying for a very expensive funeral for that medium, thinking that the solution is just that the money will come from digital only. No, you can still make a lot of money with print, but if you indeed reinvent it accordingly. So this is the end game, to reinforce print, to make sure that the flat is your new up. You can achieve flat by reinventing your print titles while you grow digital audiences and revenues. Finally, how do we create a culture of innovation? How do we get a team? How do we get your companies to indeed do this, or you as distributors to engage publishers to rethink their titles? The first thing, innovation is not imitation. So coming here, taking notes, oh, look at that one, we'll do that one. It doesn't work that way, yes? We are not Google also, we're not Facebook. We do journalism, we don't do algorithms, yeah? Experimentation, yes, but um, <laughs> failure is overrated. You hear a lot about, oh, we must create an innovation lab. We must create a team that they are the great uh, uh, inventors, reinventors of the business, yes? And we must experiment and fail, and fail constantly. This culture of Silicon Valley, where last year I spent six months, it's not what we need or what we know how to do. We are not them. And we now have a very prescriptive way forward, but indeed it does require courage. We know enough about what works to embrace and implement it. And innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't happen because you hire digital natives or, or create, again, innovation labs or separate teams and they come to you with the ideas. It doesn't happen that way. It has to permeate everything. Everywhere and everyone. And it must start and end in the newsroom or in your editorial offices. If it's not content-driven, it'll never happen. It doesn't come from the head of marketing. It doesn't come from the head of sales, the head of distribution. It comes from the editors. It makes sense. But they're the ones in charge of the magic, of the product. So how do you reorganize? This is a challenge to do more things than ever. This is the challenge. How do we create a newsroom, an editorial hub, an office that can do this? Well, the first thing is to introduce an intake and an output system to divide content creation from content production, creating two rhythm newsrooms. Again, you cannot achieve a premium printed product if you're obsessed with the speed of the net or mobile. It doesn't work. You need speed, but you also need phenomenal depth to indeed push this up and charge a premium. And you need to introduce new concepts and units so journalists can indeed do digital narratives. A radar desk for breaking news. And this very much applies to magazines. It's outrageous, the great titles, great titles that we all love, whether it be GQ, uh, uh, whether it be Vogue, are not giving me content on a daily basis. It's inexcusable that I have to wait until the issue to really consume. So stories that are constantly breaking and you're sharing with are done in these desks. An echo desk for social media, and because you can't manage what you can't measure, an analytics desk, this is phenomenally important. You must be obsessed with analytics, with data journalism pools. And we've been saying this for the last six years, and we've already seen it in two publishers. They've hit this landmark. We've set innovation, have set this for the last six years. Developers in the newsroom, in the editorial office, one for every five journalists. How many of the publishers here faces reality, with journalists, designers, and developers working together, where you author once and you publish everywhere, with graphic pools, where you conceive the visual and the written simultaneously, yes. with a business super desk to indeed get native advertising going in earnest. And this desk 
is as close as possible to editorial, without crossing that line, but marketing, sales, IT, very close to it. And you must, must develop a newsroom management manual. Um, this is some samples of the ones that we do when we transform publishers, newspapers, magazines, where you begin with the audience, with the demand point of view of the audience rather than the supply. Which products do I have to sell? No. Let's now, in the digital age, understand what audiences you have consuming what products, including print, and what do I give them throughout that 24-hour news content consumption cycle? So an audience first. Not digital first, not mobile first, audience first. It's just a sample of some of our projects. And we use, we use media architecture to change workflows and results. So we use physical change to bring about conceptual change. And this works by magic. It's just magical when you indeed transform something. So we started with this. <laughs> this is uh, the warehouse of a major publisher. <laughs> You've seen this. Many of us have seen this all over the world. This is what we started this with. We gutted it. We emptied it. And this is what we ended up with. Two newspapers, four magazines, I don't know how many websites, a radio, TV, people doing long form journalism here, also doing very fast digital journalism. This publisher sold this at a premium of 40% because indeed the buyer that came after saw this is now a digital forward looking business as opposed to a print first business. Yes. 4,300 square meters, uh, okay, it was a big investment, but not that big when you look into the return itself, yes. So the three key fronts, you must reinvent print while developing the digital business, but you must reinvent print. Do not leave print alone. Don't think it's just a matter of, oh, oh, oh yeah, okay, if we just sort of, you know, survive another year. It's irresponsible. Again, you're paying for a very expensive funeral. It has to be reinvented, so it's relevant. And as I said to you, there is a place for print in the lives of our consumers, of the people who pay our bills. They want a print product in that cycle, but it has to be different. You must reinvent the newsroom, the place where you put it all together, the editorial department, and you must invest in journalism. And what really matters is journalism. Wild ideas and, and crazy people. <laughs> That's what made this business in Europe, everywhere else, just wonderful, crazy people. Journalists who, who focus on great writing, constant reinvention, who, who pick up new gadgets with both hands. This dichotomy, oh, digital versus print, please, please. And you know, there are Taliban's on both sides, yeah? digital and print. Just let's bury that hatchet. You must have people who are inquisitive, like your audiences, about any new device. Yes? It's easier. It's easier to ride a wave than to swim against it. And it's only when you drop yesterday's assumptions that you can indeed glimpse tomorrow's possibilities. So it's time to unlearn what, what you think you knew and time to really think about innovation. Yes. And what happens in every company where we go to do a transformation, you always see this dynamic, fear, fear, the mortal enemy of creativity. Every company has an inertia that pulls it back down to its, its that's the way we do things. And creativity is what you indeed need to come up with those new titles that will become premium products, digital relevant products as well, where the money will come from. And I want to conclude with this, which I think is very relevant to where we are here today as well. But you know what this is. And there was a man many years ago who was a great visionary, politics aside, François Mitterrand was a great leader and a great visionary. And he loved the Louvre. And he proposed to change this. And everybody, the bobos of Paris, you know, Mon Dieu, qu'est-ce que tu fais en ça? No, no, you can't touch the Louvre. 
and there were gutters, and it was raining in, and he had to do with syndicate this, syndicate that. And nobody was going to the Louvre. It was, it was dying. It was a dying institution. Oh, great, great, great prestige. And he pushed through, and of all his political battles, this was the most bruising one. They hated him because of what he wanted to do. And he reinvented the Louvre. God forbid he brought a Japanese American architect to stick a pyramid. Everything changed, nothing changed. Today, this is the most visited museum in the world. It became relevant to a younger generation. Everything changed, nothing changed. La Gioconda's in the same place. The experience that you get is just about the same in terms of the art. And this, this kind of vision that indeed you need to transform your titles. It's not about doing silly experiments and it's about preserving the old by bringing in the new with the conviction that you can do it. If you accept change, you never grow old. Change is what we do at Innovations. This is from our clients the last 12 months. This is the advertisement. This is what the Financial Times says about us, The Economist, and this is some of our work. Thank you very much. This is our slogan, good journalism is good business. It's time to innovate. Thank you.